petition clause of the First Amendment basically says that Congress cannot interfere, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, with the right of the people to petition the government for redress of grievances. And that's a very important statement there. I think, you know, here some, some degree of literalism is very important when we read that text. It does not say the right of the people to petition Congress for redress of grievances. It does not say the right of the people to petition the president or the courts or a federal agency. By the government, it means all aspects, all agents and agencies and organizations of the government, whether legislative, judicial, executive, administrative, or otherwise. And that's important because there were a number of state constitutions being written around the same time where it was explicitly stated that in a state constitution bill of rights, that it was the right of the people to petition the legislature. The framers of the First Amendment in the first Congress chose the government. And so it's very, very, very broad. The other thing I would just say about the petition clause is that it came in response to petitioning that was very common during the revolution, very common during English and medieval European uh, political history. And it's always difficult to say, well, why did they put this particular clause in there? But I, I think the experience that English colonial subjects had with petitioning and the actual suppression of petitioning by the English crown in previous centuries, with this petition clause, I think it's fair to say that at minimum, it means that no restrictions can be placed on the kinds of petitions, so as many people can sign them as they wish, nor can any restriction be placed on the subject of these petitions. If you look at some of the most important protest acts that were, um, or protest petitions that were sent by the Continental Congress, what is called the Olive Branch Petition, which was kind of a, a last chance to try to make up some degree of uh, compromise between the colonists and uh, the English crown. A number of those acts protested against petitions, the Stamp Act, the way the Stamp Act was enforced, things like that. At some level, the petitions that had been repeatedly uh, sent by colonial assemblies and by the United uh, Assemblies in, in the Continental Congress to protest these acts were basically met with not only rejection, but by the deployment of uh, troops and or other officers of colonial governors to enforce the taxation. And so you see this right in Thomas Jefferson's Declaration of Independence, which is that, you know, the petitions of the people um, have just been repeatedly ignored in this sense. There was a, a, a very strong feeling on the part of the colonists before the revolution uh, and then immediately after it that the crown had not only ignored petitions, but it reacted violently to them. <laughs> 